Hey, what's up? Six Tayo here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to replace Gistor glass on your uh, Samsung Galaxy S3. It also applies to the Galaxy Note 2 and Galaxy S4. However, the Galaxy S4s are a little bit harder to do. Um, a little bit tougher adhesive uh, underneath this, but um, still the exact same concept. This is just a store phone, but I'm going to do that later. This one is just a uh, Sprint Galaxy S3. As you can see, it's a fully working display. No issues there whatsoever. The uh, menu key, back button, and the home button fully works. So, yeah, just the glass. Uh, I don't have any uh, blue glass left in stock, so the customer asked if we could just put a white one on for her instead. And that's just fine. Now, um, let's see. Some of the tools that you will need. A uh, you know, standard uh, micro or semi-micro uh, Phillips screwdriver, magnetized preferably. A uh, little exacto blade, you know, it's just something centered like this, and uh, preferably clean. If it's not clean, you could just go ahead and scrape it off with something flat, uh, just like that. Just make sure you have a clean blade because if you uh, have a blade with stuff stuck to it, you're gonna scratch your display. But um, if you scratch your display, you uh, shouldn't have any issues anyway. Because if you use a uh, UV liquid bonding adhesive, then uh, you should be just fine. You also need a liquid, not a liquid, a uh, UV curing chamber, which is uh, right behind my iPad right here, so I'll show you that when I actually get to it. And uh, you also need uh, some work gloves or racing gloves. Either ones will do just fine. Um, let's see, these are ProFlex. I mean, if something gets too hot, it's going to burn you anyways, but yeah. And it doesn't really matter what color you do, like this one I did is pink. It looks really cool and stuff. It works and yeah so let's get right into it so first off go ahead and power off the phone you could just take your battery out it doesn't really matter if you power it down or just take the battery out set whatever case is off to the side take your case off or your back housing these are really flimsy and they break really easily I mean you could bend them just fine but sometimes they break for no reason and we're going to set this off to the side. We're actually going to use this to hold the screws in. So just set that over there. Take your battery out. Set that off over there. Now take all of your screws out. And under this housing there is one little black screw uh, holding the motherboard down. So I'll just show you where that is. What? Huh? Hey. Give me a receipt. Let's see. Cover. So, if you're wondering my opinion of the Galaxy S3, or actually any Galaxy phone for that matter, um, if you're upgrading or something like that, and you're looking at this phone, just walk away. It's one of the worst possible choices you can actually get, because honestly, Samsung phones are not built to uh, be durable in any way at all. Housing is made completely of plastic, it's a very cheap build, and the glass is very brittle. Uh, Galaxy Glass is actually the number one repair on the store. Uh, without fail, every single day these come in completely shattered. This Galaxy S4 just happened to be lucky, it just has one solid crack. But that's really surprising, because usually they come in completely shattered. The uh, Galaxy S4 glass is actually half the thickness of a Galaxy S3 Note 2 glass. The good thing is, though, about them is they're pretty cheap to fix, and if you know how to fix them, you're looking at only spending... If you don't have any tools, you're looking at spending, like, maybe 50, 60 bucks for all the stuff that you'll need, including the glass. So, there's one more screw right here. This little black screw. Let's go ahead and lift that little guy up. Now, you want to be really careful with your... Uh, cable right here, this little coax cable. 
Um, you want to get like your exacto blade or something like that and lift it from the back. That way you don't lift up the actual little terminal for the coax cable. Because uh, if you do that, uh, it may not work if you uh, glue it down or something like that. Which I don't recommend doing, but I mean, if you don't have any supplies, then yeah, kind of screwed. Or any solder, for that matter. Alright, next we're going to get our speaker off. So what we're going to do, we're going to get right under here. Pop it out. That just like so. Keep it away from your screws uh, because the speaker is a magnet. So keep it from uh, you know, fucking up and shit like that. Just set the motherboard over there like that. Um, yeah, keep your uh, speaker from fucking up. Keep them away from metal objects. You're going to take out all the missed parts because you're not going to want to liquid damage any of your uh, missed parts with UV adhesive. Which I'm almost out of, so I need to order more. I don't know why I only order one tube. I should order like three or four. Okay. So, uh, oh, I wasn't even explaining that. So this is just held down by some sticky stuff right up here. Just going to take that out. Next we're going to go ahead and take our rear speaker and uh, volume flex. So these uh, you just lift out just like I just did. Then uh, for your volume flex stuff, just get right behind that flex cable. Just kind of separate it from the sticky stuff. And just kind of work it out. And it should just pop right out. Next, we're going to go ahead and get our uh, front camera and proximity sensor out. Held down by one little screw. You can set that off with the other screws because it doesn't look like any others. And the way to get that out, just get under that little metal thing. You may come out separate. You can also just pull your camera out and it'll come out just like so and stay together. Now we can move on to getting the actual glass off. So I didn't mention this in the tools that you'll need before, but you'll need a heat gun. The heat gun that I'm using is a 750 to 1000 degree heat gun from uh, Walmart. It's a Wagner heat gun. And uh, what I usually do is I hold a heat gun about six to eight inches above the, uh, the glass, the part that I'm heating up. And uh, the most important part when you're starting is a good starting point. Usually, um, I start at this little bottom corner right here, because I go up and around, and then I get all the glass off, then I deal with these little heat keys later. But um, if you have a solid, uh, non-broken piece down here, but it's all shattered up here, you want to start at the most broken part. So I'm going to start right here. We're going to go about... 30 to 40 seconds, so the video is at 7, we'll just go from 8 minutes, then we'll go for about 30 to 40 seconds, I'll just check it and see how hot it is. The most important part is uh, that you, um, you get the glass just hot enough to where it's just unbearable to touch, and uh, that's how you know it's hot enough. But uh, you don't want to go too hot because if you uh, heat the glass up too much, then um, you're going to have some LCD burn. Which on the Galaxy S3, it will show up yellowish. Or, um, and when the phone's off, it's just going to look like shit. So, should be good. Yeah, that, that feels good. Take your X-Acto blade, and let's go ahead and lift that up. Be very careful when you do this, because if you slip up at all, then uh, you're going to end up screwing it up. But as long as you get a decent starting point, it should separate just fine. It's not actually that hot, but um, all that hot for what it should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my left glove on first. Then I'm going to leave my right glove off, that way I can still fill the glass. But um, once I actually you know, start using this again, because this is uh, all metal, it's going to be really, really fucking hot. So I'm going to put my glove on for that. Now, if you're in a, in a professional shop or something like that, which I'm not saying mine is not a professional shop, but um, if you're in another professional shop that happens to have a heating plate for this exact repair, then um, yeah, this would be a lot easier because you get up the whole glass all at once. 
But um, if you don't have one, if you're just at your house or something like that, then uh, this is for you. But you do want to have something you know, nice and solid like this uh, this marble plate that I have right here. I think it's like a cutting board. I got it for free from I don't know where. But um, yeah, you want to have something solid and something you're not going to really give a shit about if you, uh, you know, burn it or something like that. Oh, that hurts so bad. Okay. So now, put my glove on. Now I can go ahead and proceed to get this glass off. And when you do this, you just want to be really careful about how you go about it. Because if you break any part of the display at all, then you're just kind of screwed. And you're going to owe the customer a uh, you know, brand new LCD digitizer assembly. And those can run you about, if you order from China or something like that, like 90 to 110 bucks. Ordering from the U.S., which I could send you a link for. Um, a Class C, uh, which is, uh, well, the seller that I go through goes by classes of uh, used ones, if he has used ones. Like a Class C one would be around 120 to 130. Okay, so we got that area. So I'm going to heat up this solid piece at the top right here. Now, um... The one thing you want to keep from doing is uh, going too quickly. If you go too quickly and you um, just like beast through all the hot uh, places, and then you get to the cold part of the glass, then um, you know it's just going to slow down a lot, be a lot harder to get. And um, if you go too quickly, you're not going to notice that quick enough, and you're going to crack your display. So if any part of your di digitizer or LCD cracks at all, you are done. Nothing you can do about it. You just have to get a new front assembly. Yeah, uh, Dan, when you get the trans help them out. Yeah, I'm trying to bounce, bounce a lot of stuff. Yes. <laughs> to refix it? Refix it. 130 installed. Yeah, 130 installed. It's just, it's just the exterior screen. So these aren't too bad. What colors have we got on this, though? I think we just have white right now. Could you, could you handle white? How much is it? 130 bucks. Uh, he's out. You're out about three hours, aren't you? I think this is the only one I have to do for customers. 
So I can do this one after, or that one after I'm done with this one. What do you think? Like an hour and a half, two hours? Probably about an hour. I can start on that one. You want to leave it, Will? Okay. Thanks, you guys. Okay. That was another Galaxy S3 that just walked in. So, <laughs> oh my god. There's some days where the only thing I work on throughout the entire day is just Galaxy phones. There was one Friday where I think 10 of them came in. I had about 25, 28 calls, somewhere around there. Uh, between 25 and 30 calls uh, throughout the day for just Galaxy phones. But 10 of them actually came in. And uh, that lasted me throughout the whole weekend because, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, it just lasted me two days, Friday and Saturday. It was just a pain to get through all of them because I couldn't help any other customers. And through the entire weekend, only one iPhone 4 came in for glass, uh, front assembly replacement. So, yeah. I think I've estimated that for every iPhone that comes in, there's uh, 20 Galaxy phones that come in with their shattered screens. So the whole thing about you know, grill glass and Samsung phones being better and more durable and stuff like that, right out the window. So you can see all that's out. One thing you want to be really careful though of is your heat sensitive touch keys, which the cable is connected to right here on the left. Over here is just kind of you know, on its own. But I heated the bottom up just enough where it came off like nothing. It will not always do that. Don't ever you know, think it's just going to come off like nothing. So, let's see, going over the display, make sure everything's good. I'm gonna test it in a sec. But yeah, um, normally you're gonna have to like kind of work with it to get it off. Oof, that, that smells just right. I've actually gotten used to the smell to the point where um, it actually smells good now. But it smells like shit. So what I'm doing with the, uh, the glue right here is I'm going to glue these buttons down because they're just going to be in the way. So the, what I do with that is I take a little bit of a dab of glue and just kind of work it around there. That way it just stays in place where I want it. Ooh, this is hot. <laughs> this frame is burning. So I'm just holding those keys down. Next, we're going to go ahead and test our LCD digitizer assembly to make sure it still works. Because if you do this and it doesn't work anymore, then you're just kind of fucked. But um, if you make it look good enough, then you can actually warranty it through Samsung, and they won't know a thing if you make this look good enough. So, no, uh, no LCD burn or anything like that. And uh, that's because I held my heat gun between 6 and 8 inches above the screen. So it's kind of sticky, so it's kind of hard to use the touch screen, but the whole touch screen works. Yep, everything still works. So we can go ahead and continue with the repair. Okie dokie. So there's two ways you can go about this. You can go the hard way or the hard way. <laughs> Um, let's see, so the adhesive on the uh, Galaxy Note 2 and the S3 is about exactly the same on the S4. It's a little bit tougher to get off. Um, sometimes what I usually have to do if I can't just like pick it off with my fingers and stuff like that, um, I have to use an alcohol or nail polish remover, and it takes for fucking ever to do. And sometimes that's the case on these, but a lot of the time I can just go ahead and 
cut some of this out, make up a little bit of a hole right there, and I can start just you know, getting all the adhesive off just like so. See how easy that comes off? This is only on the Galaxy S3 and the Note 2. On the S4, it's going to be a big ass pain to do. In a small, weird way, this reminds me of Plasti Dip almost. Like if I didn't put too much or enough coats on it, but it's just enough to make a sheet. Weird. Lots and lots of goopy stuff. Okay. Oh, that went through great. Didn't really have to you know, use any liquid or anything like that to get it off. But uh, yeah, the adhesive on these are really easy to work with, not too hard to get off. So I'm not really surprised at all. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and go with my finger, get all those little remnants on the edges. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the edges I can't reach with the X-Acto blade. So with my X-Acto blade, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go right between the frame and the uh, display. I'm just going to kind of cut that crap out. Okay. Where are my microfiber cloths? Give me one sec, I'll be right back. I just need to go find a microfiber cloth. One sec. Okay, I'm back. Got one. So, I forgot to mention this as well. Microfiber cloth, or actually, paper towel would work just fine too, but preferably I use a microfiber cloth. And um, I also do use my 91% uh, alcohol which is right here. And uh, what I do with that, I just take a cap, I fill it, set it right here, and that's all the alcohol that I should need. What I do with the alcohol, take my finger just like that, submerge it, and just like so, I just clean the shit off. Now it doesn't matter if you leave any streaks behind because that's all going to get covered up with the UV adhesive. If you're doing a dry apply, then you're going to want to get this uh, get this completely clean because you're going to see everything that's under there. But I don't recommend doing a dry apply because doing that causes uh, touch sensitivity loss, which is why you know I look so much into doing a UV liquid adhesive. Okay. Okay, so you'll just want to talk to Nate when he gets a second. So, give me one second, I just have to talk with the customer. Okay, I'm back. Uh, just a customer oh, came in right with uh, water damage. Water damage repair? Um, okay. 
Yeah, I just water damage repair. How much? 25. Okay. Yeah, I just water damage uh, S3. Where did my stupid cloth go? There it is. Then you're just, is the plan that you're going to, you're going to leave that and Nate's going to work on it and call you, or what's the plan? Um, I may be able to have it ready by tomorrow, but the latest probably Monday or Tuesday. Okay, so let's go ahead and get your foot in the book. All right, guys, thanks again for Make coming Make sure everything's back. clean. Again, doesn't really matter if you have any streaks on there, just uh, as long as there's no dust or anything like that. I also have an air duster here, just in case. Okay, so what I usually do, what I've been doing lately with, uh, you know, Galaxy S3s and whatever I'm working on, is I do three lines of UV adhesive. I'll just go ahead and show you. So because I'm so low on this, I'm just going to go ahead and stick this in there, just like that. Then I'm going to put one semi-thick line right here. And one thin line. And then one more line right here. I probably used way too much on this actually. You don't need that much right there. That's gonna that's gonna leak out. Okay. Now one thing I didn't show you is actually masking the back, but um, let's see, actually I can maybe still do that. Let's see, where my tape went. Alright, here's Brad's, right there. Okay. Okay. Ah, oh, fuck it, I'll just clean it up later. Um, at the end of this video, I'm just going to do a little bit of a tape job on this, just so I can show you how to tape it up, which is uh, recommended before you, uh, you know, apply UV adhesive. So, so, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my UV uh, curing chamber before I start this. Put that S3 up there. That's on. So when you do this, before you uh, start you know, doing everything, make sure you're ready to take the thing out. Do that. Take your exacto blade, line it up with the uh, home button. And what you want to do is you want to just make sure you don't get any bubbles in there. Just want to let it down really slowly, really nicely. It should go on just fine. So one sec, okay, once you got that on there, you just want to be really quick with it. You want to hold down the top, uh, or top or bottom, whatever you're going to go with first. And uh, just hold in your liquid curing, or UV curing chamber. And just make sure that no bubbles pop up. You just want to make sure there's no bubbles. You can also do this with rubber clamps, those should work just fine as well.
Then do the same thing with the other end, uh, the opposite end of what you started with. And uh, these liquid or UV curing chambers work pretty quickly with your uh, UV adhesive. You need a link for the kind that I use. I'll go ahead and send you the link, but I will not include it in the description because maybe the seller won't you know, sell it anymore. Okay. And just to ensure those sides are good, let's go ahead and check it real quick. Alright, looks perfect. No problem. Okay, thanks guys. I'm gonna go ahead and set it in the side in sideways just like so. I'm gonna hold it up really close to the, the actual lights. But to protect the, the lights from getting sticky stuff all over it. Um, I'm just gonna keep that plastic on top of there. Just kind of maneuver it. That should be good now. Next, you want to cure the uh, back side because that's the most important part. Curing the back is very important only because uh, the adhesive that gets underneath the display, um, you know, curing the back of it kind of helps it. And the kind and the adhesive that seeps to the the back of it, um, you know, cures in place, and you don't have to worry about it. And it's easier to get off too. So, yeah. Hey, Dan. Yes, sir. Help you out. Can you possibly repair this? Today, what is it? Looks like a Razor M. Is it just the glass? In the screen. Do we have that white one in there still? We had a white one? We used to. In the store stock stuff. I... The glass was fine. Um... Plug it into the charger because I can't tell if there's any cracks on the display or not. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to leave it in there curing for about another five or so minutes. So I'm going to come back once that's done and uh, we'll go ahead and start cleaning this off. And um, throughout, after the five minutes, go ahead and you know, just let it cure a little bit more on the front. Could you? Um, there we go. Could you, uh, but um, it looks like this, where it's all perfect and completely fused, then uh, you shouldn't have to worry about it too much, but I would just leave it in there curing on the front for about a minute or two after it's uh, fully cured on the back. This is the back is the most important part after all you semi-cured the front. So in about five to seven minutes, I'll be right back, and we'll go ahead and continue with this repair. Okay, so everything should be done curing now, so let's go ahead and take it out. Now, it looks a little bit wet, which it actually is kind of, but um, you know, most of this UV liquid is completely cured, so all I have to do is really just wipe it off. And I'm going to use uh, some paper towels for that, which are right behind me. So let's go ahead and switch the camera around. Uh, stupid thing. Stupid thing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off because we don't need it on anymore. Let's see, where is my plastic pry tools? Plastic pry tools, you'll probably have these with your glass that you ordered. So, you know, these are everywhere. I have drawers and drawers full of them. So, yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out because it really doesn't have any business being there other than holding that cable down, but you don't really need it to be there for anything. Let's see if you can. Just kind of get all that crap off. We're going to get these uh, volume buttons out. What I'm going to actually do is just stick those in alcohol. That way kind of dissipates that sticky stuff. We're going to wipe those off in a minute anyway. So with that, you just want to kind of get that shit out of there. Actually, what might be more effective here is a old toothbrush, which I do just have in here. In my box of tools and stuff. Put that on alcohol. 
then I'm just gonna go ahead and brush that shit out of there. Yeah. Really, all you, all I'm really doing is just clearing this adhesive out. So just get the bristles in the best you can. Then with the stuff that's like kind of out in the open, I guess you can call it, you just kind of rub it off and it comes off just fine. Here by your LCD digitizer cable. Just kind of get under there. Can't get it too good, then just be very careful, but you can go with it with the toothbrush. Well, as soon as you finish putting in your Gmail, automatically. Most of your pictures are from over there. Yeah, you're good, but you've got to put in your Gmail info. It takes, when I did my resets on my phone, it takes about two hours to get them all. They just appear on the phone. It's really incredible. Thanks, brother. Then down here, you can just go over it just like this with the alcohol. Now I know you're thinking, oh, you're getting it wet. It might fuck up something later. No, this is 91% alcohol. This is what I use for water damage repair. So you should be just fine doing this. Because uh, there may be some adhesive that's just like kind of stuck there. Stuff like that. Maybe over your home button so your home button won't work. So, yeah, just go ahead and do this and you'll be just fine. Let's see. Now we're going to go ahead and get the stuff out of the proximity sensor. And let's see, I'll just go over that with the uh, paper towel in a minute too. I'm going to take a screwdriver with a, with a flat end on it. So a torque screw should do just fine. Take out your microfiber cloth. Douse it in alcohol. Just like so. And we're going to clean out the front camera. And the main thing you're trying to do is just get your front camera lens as clear as possible. That way you can actually Know, use it and not have a fucked up looking camera. Right, go through it again. Go with the dry tip and just get it out of there. And the easiest way to tell whether or not it's clean or not is by simply sticking your front camera in there. It looks clear, looks clean, awesome, which it does. So now I'm going to go at it with the paper towels. Five dollars to Misty right over there. I'll be right back. Okay. Let's pull out this like so. And just gonna get in there. Get all that shit out of there. Wipe off this end. Wipe off over here. Some stuff's left there, but let's see. All the spots that I wiped off. All that's left is a little bit right there. And a little bit in there. Yeah. At the edges, you're probably going to have some stuff like this on there too. Simply some alcohol in there, 
go over it, it should just come off just like so. Actually, you know what, we're going to leave it on there. And then once we got it fully assembled, then we'll wipe the rest of it off. Because it's not really in the way at all. Next, we're going to take out this ear speaker piece. Because we don't know if there's any adhesive left in there either. If you don't get that adhesive out of there, you're not going to be able to use your ear speaker. Just like so. I'm going to take my uh, air duster, put the rest through there, put my finger right in front of it so I can feel if there's air coming through. If there is, that means your ear speaker will work when you put it back in. So, looks like everything's good. Um, it looks a little bit wet, but it's not going to affect anything. Um, but if you're too worried about it, then just go ahead, just kind of dab it just like so, as if you were, uh, you know, getting wet stuff off of a carpet. And, you know, it's decently dry now. So you should be good. You can go ahead and put our front camera back in there. Actually, I just got the uh, front camera lens all wet when I did that. So... Oh shit. <laughs> it's UV adhesive. Never mind. Okay. Now let's get this bitch clean so we can get this phone back together. Okay. Let's see if it's clean now. Yeah, it's good. Okay, now go ahead and we're gonna screw that little guy in there. Next, we're gonna go ahead and take our ear speaker assembly in, put it back in there. Now, it may not stick down the way it used to because the adhesive that holds it down is really thin and weak. So, no big surprise if it doesn't stick down as well. But once your motherboard's in there and the phone's all together, it's going to stay down just fine. Now, we're going to go ahead and take this other guys out. And I'm just going to kind of wipe them off with the uh, paper towel. It's a little bit wet, but it's not going to do anything or affect anything, so we'll just put it back in there. Alright, clicks just fine. Actually, we can go ahead and do the same thing with the power button. It's really tiny, so try not to lose it. If you lose them, then I think it's like five or six bucks on eBay.
Let's see. Let's not forget about our cable right here, which I almost just did. <laughs> uh, you'll know if you, you forgot to put this cable back in, because uh, I think your data signal is not going to work. Hey, Dan, can you help him? Okay, uh, that's all the way down. Just going to push down some more. And let's see, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit. And then I told you to come in to see if we had one of these. Okay, Nate, what? he came in yesterday and I had him come back to see if we had a new display for one of these. Because I remember you... You were warranting exchanging one of these phones through the mail or something. I'm still waiting on HTC. You haven't got it back yet? So just the price in there is the only price that we have available for this? Yeah, L LCD did try to replace that anyway. It's 230 230 Yeah. 230. And uh, we can do black or white glass, or we can also do the HTC logo instead of the Verizon logo. So do you have that in stock? We don't. We have to order it. It's about three days out. So, just make sure that your cable's underneath the motherboard, not over, because it might not go down all the way when you put your housing on. Okay. We'll be here. Thanks for coming back. All right, Okay. And set that down there. Should be just fine. Next, we're going to go ahead and put this little guy in there. Screw the motherboard down. Next, we're going to go ahead and put our housing back on, which is over here. Uh, what I usually do is I start off with these two bottom screws right here. That way I know that clamps down just fine. Just make sure you don't forget any screws. If you do, it's not a big deal. I mean, but uh, it is better to put all the screws back in there. I'm gonna get those, all those back in. Let's see. Make sure that camera lens is down. If it is, great. Oh, we have the top screw. <laughs> Stupid me. It's covered in UV adhesive on the front, so what I'm going to go ahead and do, get a little bit more alcohol, a little messy there, but it's okay. It's going to go over the home button, home button is the most important part you want to get, actually all the parts are the most important parts you want to get. And go along the sides with the alcohol.
button clicks just fine. We get to go ahead and turn it back on. We get to test everything. Show some adhesive on the button itself. So all the buttons work just fine. Back looks kind of shitty because it's covered in crumbs of UV stuff. Buttons light up just fine. And it's kind of laggy, but it's a Samsung phone, so it's expected. And touch the full touch sensitivity, make sure everything works. Back camera is fine. Let's do the front camera. Stop. Yeah. And let's see. Yep, everything works just fine. So that is how to successfully replace just your glass using UV liquid adhesive and curing it properly um, on your Galaxy S3, Galaxy Note 2, and uh, Galaxy S4 as well. So the Galaxy S4 adhesive is just a bitch to work with. That's the only difference. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and comment and subscribe in the box below. Follow me on Twitter at 6 Zero. If you have any questions on where to get some of these parts, if you don't have any or you don't know where to get them, so let me know and I'll send you a link, but I will not include them in the description. So, yeah. Okay. See ya.